Before I start, I want to say a few words. I get rather angry when I talk about subjects like this. It may not be the thing that a lot of people get very pissed off at, but it's something that I do. So, fair warning, there's a chance you may see me much more angry than you have before. I may even use some foul language that you normally don't hear from my mouth. Not that it's really that different from what most of you would say yourselves, but it's a fair warning. It's a bit of a shock. And I thought that a cuddly, purring kitty would be helpful right now. Maybe it will calm me down a bit, but probably not. This, this tends to set me off. Okay, so I need to vlog now. There you go. This is my fifth recording now. All I end up doing is getting extremely angry and start ranting and going off subject very, very quickly. And very angry, that does not help. Well, not that angry, I at least speak. If I get angry enough, I actually shut up and start being almost completely silent. If you ever see me in that situation, get me to calm down very, very quickly or else I'm going to do something really dumb. Education. Our educational system in the United States, and I'm saying our because I live in the U.S., I cannot speak for other countries when it comes to education. Let's be honest, those of you that are watching in a different country probably have a better educational system than we ha what we have. Our educational system in the United States is terrible. Horrible. I mean, seriously, I think I can do better. I can probably organize the educational system better than what it is organized right now. And I don't have that level of experience other than actually suffering through it for 13 years. And I'm only speaking to... Pre-college education. College education would be a completely different rant, but nowhere near as angry as the uh, primary and secondary school education or grade school education, whatever you want to call it. Elementary, middle, high, elementary, junior, high, high, doesn't matter. Grades kindergarten through 12th is what I'm referring to. So, an idea as to what my educational experiences were like. I started school a year early. Um, I was four years old when I entered kindergarten. And kindergarten was pretty much where things started getting screwed up, in fact. Um, the rest of my class were taught as though they didn't know how to read. I don't know if they really didn't know how to read. I know some of them definitely did. I was not the only one in the class that already knew how to read before coming to school. But they were taught things like how to read a number. And that didn't exactly work for me. I already knew how to do basic math at that point, after all. Um... What I liked, though, was that we had a computer in the classroom, and I could play games on that computer, and it was a really old computer by today's standards, of course. I mean, it had four full colors. Um, CGA Graphics had a palette swap, so you can go between CMTK or Cyan, Teal, Magenta, and Yellow. I had to think of it. CMTY, that's right, not CMTK. Or also Red, Orange, Green, Blue. So I preferred red, orange, green, blue, because green was my favorite color, of course, and orange was my second favorite color, and that had both of those. So I went into the program and switched the palette, because that program had the ability to swap palettes. That way, a kid could actually choose their favorite colors. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I was kicked off the computer for doing that, because I broke the program. I mean, admittedly, computers were really young at the time. The teacher probably had never used a computer before entering the classroom. I mean, this was the 80s, so we're not exactly talking about something fully relevant now, but that was the first symptom of having to deal with a royally screwed up educational system. On top of that, as mentioned before, I wasn't exactly learning anything. In fact, I pretty much got nothing out of kindergarten whatsoever other than knowledge that I actually have a react bad reaction to Jello. Nothing like puking all over all of my classmates. So, my mom actually pulled me out of school. She had first tried to go through the educational system to get me to skip a grade, just so I wouldn't have to deal with sheer boredom and constant mind-numbing stupidity. They rejected it because my handwriting was too bad. And have you ever seen a first grader's handwriting? You can't really tell the difference between a first grader's handwriting and a kindergartner's handwriting, for that matter. 
So my mom pulled me out of school and I homeschooled for a semester, basically. I That semester probably saved my academic career completely. I would not have these diplomas that are behind me if it weren't for that. What my mom did was take a completely different approach to education, and one that would probably not work for 100% of students, but no single approach is going to work for 100% of students no matter what approach that you do. I'm referring to teaching me how to learn, and teaching me to be curious, and teaching me to ask questions. These are things that I'll get back to in a little bit, but... The general idea was that I had a botany class, which I actually don't remember much of anything about other than the nature walks that we took in order to be able to identify leaves that were on trees and on the ground, being able to identify various plants and stuff like that. My mom actually had plans on making the next semester into more of a biology class, which never happened because my parents got divorced and, well, you can't exactly homeschool. A single parent can't exactly homeschool when they also need to work in order to be able to have enough money to afford having their kid. I didn't just learn about the 50 states. Uh, not only could I name the 50 states, I can name the 50 capitals and probably tell you something interesting about each of the states. It's not the fact that I learned that. It's the fact that I wanted to learn that. Somewhere around this time is when I learned the birds and the bees. Um... I think I might have actually been in kindergarten at the time for it. I, this isn't quite in my memory, so I can't exactly tell you exactly when I did this. Um, basically, the conversation went from my mom trying to figure out a way of telling me not to do any illicit drugs, or at least ask about the long history when it came to drugs, but my mom was taking prescription drugs, specifically fertility treatments, so I can have a little brother and little sister which turned into, how does that happen? And, well, as mentioned before, my mom taught me to be curious. Curiosity is incredibly powerful, and something that 12 years of public, 13 years of public education tend to kill. And it kind of pisses me off, to be quite honest. After that, we moved to New York City, and that's when the second problem of public education happened, namely... Boredom. I, after seeing all of my test results, the New York City public educational system put me into regular ordinary first grade. Even though by the end of my semester homeschooling, I was effectively a fourth grader in terms of knowledge. So nothing like repeating three years of education for absolutely no reason whatsoever to make you really interested in learning. Dealing with that for a year and a half, including half a year of a teacher whose classroom control method was screaming at their kids until they stopped, or until she lost her voice, which happened on multiple bases. And having a substitute that actually died due to lung cancer, due to constantly chain-smoking, yeah, that was not exactly the world's greatest place for education, but, you know, it beat South Florida in general. Speaking of, after second grade, I moved to South Florida. Moved back, I should say. I was originally born there. I have a lot of complaints about the South Florida educational system. One of them was not my third grade year. My third grade teacher, Miss um, Anita Clark, which if you somehow watch this, one, you are awesome. You are the best teacher I've ever had. Thank you. And you did wonders for my older cousin as well. You helped support her when her father was crushed by a jack, or by a car when the jack slipped, I should say. And you probably are the other reason why I did not screw up in my education. Miss Clark realized that I didn't learn quite in the normal manner that most of her other students did. And I say most. There were other students that learned in similar ways that I did, at least. She recognized that some things weren't working in her class for me. I wasn't the type of person that would be all that greatly enthused by the way she was teaching math because I had already known that math by this point. I was effectively, well, a full year ahead, which is the reason why she put me into a year ahead worth of math. So I got to experience mathematics a full year ahead, which, that was better. I got a teacher that recognized that, huh, you know, this kid should probably be taught in this manner instead of this manner. Why don't we do something about that? That was within our realm, within what she could control. And it worked out great. I mean, I'm not going to say I was perfect or anything like that. 
it just worked. Fourth grade came about. Um, when I had entered third grade, she had also made sure that I was tested for the gifted program. Um, while my opinion on those tests are basically an IQ test is useful for determining whether you're good at taking IQ tests, it doesn't particularly matter. I was put into the gifted program, we moved around to make sure I wasn't in a really crappy school, and I ended up in a relatively rich school. Um, and that year was probably the best year grades-wise I've ever had. I was reasonably happy. I had some bullying problems that had started, which I'll get to in a bit. Um, I had knowledge. I had a thirst for learning. I had exposure to a nice media center with lots of books and computers. It was great. Um, then fifth grade happened, and that's where everything started collapsing. Uh, Mm, that's a little melodramatic. More... Fifth grade is the point where I hit the third problem, and the third problem with the public educational system is probably one of the largest, and that's institutional problems. So they decided, at least in my school, and I think it was actually Florida-wide, or being phased in Florida-wide, was to change the way they taught a lot of things, including mathematics. Um, for those of you more familiar with mathematical theory, this is when they started introducing group theory into mathematics for elementary school. I have absolutely no problems with teaching group theory, don't get me wrong, it makes perfect sense, especially now that I know the basis behind it after college, but the problem wasn't that. The problem was the fact that I had to go repeat fifth grade mathematics for absolutely no reason whatsoever. So if you've been keeping count at home, that means that I have repeated first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, then fourth grade again or fifth grade, then fifth grade again. So, great job, educational system! Let's take this individual that seemed to be responding very well to this particular situation and completely beat them over the head with a baseball bat. Because that's basically what you did to me. At that point, I stopped caring about grades, because, you know, why should I bother doing any of this homework? It's all stuff I've done before anyway, and nobody's going to listen to me if I say, I already know this information. All they're going to do is pay attention and go, well, you need to take this anyway, because we said so. One of the things that my mom never really instilled in me was the idea of obedience. I don't like the idea of blind obedience to anyone ever. Definitely not then. Definitely not now. I like reasoned obedience. There's a reason why I followed my mother's directions. There's a reason why I usually followed my teacher's directions. This was somebody upon high that knew absolutely nothing about my situation, or absolutely nothing about my class's situation, for that matter, and went, you are going to teach this this way, we don't care about your previous results. Uh, that would be when excrement started hitting the ventilation system, and then somebody decided to go fire off a poop storm known as middle school. So middle school is where a lot of things just exploded, and there was excrement all over the walls, figurative and literal, because my middle school wasn't exactly a very nice school. Um, first off was the bullying. I mentioned before, it started in fourth grade, kicked up a little bit in fifth grade. Middle school, which is sixth grade in Florida system, is where everything started going horribly wrong. Um, I started getting punches out in the middle of hallways. Um, to give you an idea, our schools were really overcrowded. For those of you that work at the same company that I work at, imagine what happens after a staff meeting along the escalators. That was about the level of density of our normal hallways. So trying to get from point A to point B was one, really crowded, two, really slow, and three, you couldn't really identify anybody in the hallways. So I was getting just punched in the middle of hallways for absolutely no reason. I had somebody who decided that they figured out that the best way of dealing with the horrible nightmare of the institution known as public school was to torture somebody, figurative, not literal, well, depending on your definition, figurative or literal torture, by the fact that he figured out that he could exploit the rules, pick on somebody, and absolutely nothing could be done about it, because all he would have to do is do it when nobody except for that person was watching. The schools did absolutely nothing about it, as usual. Um, that definitely contributed to my psychological condition and my starting to hate school. Keep in mind, up until this point, I loved school. It was a punishment for me to have to stay home from school because I was sick. Imagine trying to hear that from somebody like a standard high schooler now, or even me as a high schooler for that matter. 
I loved school, and that killed my love for school. But, you know, school wasn't entirely bad. I mean, there was horrible parts of it, but, you know, at least I didn't have to deal with, um... Oh, right. That comes to the next problem of middle school. Namely, that's when I had a teacher lie to my face. For no good reason. So, something that you may not know about me is that I am extremely fiercely supportive of a good sexual education. Um, I believe that abstinence-only education is a pox against humanity. I believe that we should be teaching our kids everything that they need to know. Don't hold things back. Teach them exactly, exactly how everything works. I will get into more details about that in another vlog. In middle school, we had a health class, and in that health class, we had a sex ed part. Um, a lot of people had sex ed in middle school. And as I mentioned before, I had the birds and the bees when I was four or five, so this wasn't exactly new knowledge to me. Being told that you can get pregnant from oral sex, on the other hand, that one confused me. Um, I spent a lot of time in libraries at the time. It took me two months of me trying to look at, okay, how in the world are digestive systems and reproductive systems linked? They don't seem to be linked in any method whatsoever. How does this happen? Oh, right. The teacher lied to me. I finally came up to that conclusion, realized the teacher lied to me. That means teachers aren't special. That means teachers are idiots. Not all teachers, obviously. I definitely value a lot of teachers, but this is middle school me speaking. And at that point, I stopped caring about school completely. Um, why should I pay attention to teachers if teachers were just going to lie to you? I mean, at that point, I might as well just stick my head in books in a library. I'd learn better. And things did get better and things did get worse in high school. Um, I had teachers try to pull personal vendettas on me in high school. Multiple, in fact. I had a teacher tell me that I was a liar to my face. Specifically, that teacher was not believing the fact that I had a ruptured Achilles tendon and made me run laps on it. Now, I want you to picture for a moment. Fully ruptured Achilles tendon. I thought it was a twisted ankle that turned into a sprained ankle and discovered, no, I've actually been walking on a ruptured Achilles tendon for the past, you know, three months at that point. And the PE teacher went, nope, I don't believe you. Go run laps or I'm failing you right now. <sighs> yeah. That went well. You know what happened to the teacher? Nothing whatsoever. You see, when a teacher in a lot of educational systems have been at a place for long enough, they are effectively immune to pretty much anything you throw at them outside of horrible crimes like, you know, sexual abuse or things like that. So, being incompetent at their job or not caring about their job is not valid grounds of firing. It didn't matter if I tried to persuade the principal of what I was doing. It didn't matter about the fact that she had violated my privacy by trying to call the doctor and getting the doctor to directly reveal things to her. That, that didn't actually matter whatsoever. Um, I actually got a lower grade as a result of that. For no reason. And that was after bringing in as many people as possible to the thing. And being in a cast. Probably contributes to a lot of my ankle problems today for my Achilles tendons. Depression didn't help in high school either. And yes, I did have good teachers in high school as well. I don't mean to focus entirely on the bad, but the point is that this is a rant. This rant is about how we have screwed up our educational system. Quick fact. We spend roughly, what is it, $40,000 a year on Education on a per-student basis? Did you know that we spent $100,000 a year per prisoner? Or prison? 100 grand. We spend over double the amount, on average, throughout the entire United States on prisoners than we do on students. How about teachers? Do you know how much a teacher actually makes salary-wise? We'll use an example. I have two bachelor's degrees. 
So in some states of the United States, I am qualified to teach either computer-based classes or mathematics-based classes. And as a result, I could get a job as a teacher in several places. I don't know if Wisconsin's one of them. I haven't actually looked. So let's say I did that. Let's say that I got a job teaching high school students calculus. Sure, we'll use that as an example. My salary would be halved, if not lower. Half. For probably some of the most important... It's probably one of, if not the most important jobs in our society. Why the fuck do we pay them so little? What, what the hell is wrong with our system? Look at us. Seriously! What place, sir, is the United States in on academics on the world stage? The best that we've done so far is to try and have this standardized testing that tells whether you graduate or not. That's fine in theory, except for the fact that all people do now is teach freaking tests. What the hell is wrong with us? Why do we do this to our kids? I don't even have kids. You know what? Double my taxes for all I care. As long as we actually had a proper and fully educated populace. I'm not talking about our current level of education. I am talking about having people graduate that will make successful leaders of the world. I'm not just talking like, you know, leaders of the country, like as in senators or things like that. I am talking the best mathematicians of the world. The best best literature experts, the best artists, and yes, artists are important too, believe it or not. It doesn't, STEM is important, but you know what, so is everything else. We don't teach STEM right, never mind teaching anything else right. Why should our students pay attention in class? Why should they do well on tests? We don't give them any incentive. In fact, the best that we do is give them disincentives, so if they screw up, they end up in prison. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Screw you, educational system. <sighs> Breathe. Let myself relax. Hopefully this wasn't too bad. I apologize for getting very angry, very worked up. This is something that bothers me quite a bit. It touches on a few subjects that are very sensitive for me. If you're still listening, thank you. And have a nice night.